videos and then they'll go to our channel ah. and then they'll see we have interviews and stuff cool. up there. You know, I think it is working. It's just uh, we just don't see it on we the screen. Not see ourselves. Let's just assume it's working. Let's <laughs> just make that assumption. All right. Okay. Now we're live. All right, we're live. We got a special podcast special today. Feature. Uh -huh, special feature. This is iBass Radio, and uh, you're here with Adam, Zach, Graciela, and Anya uh -huh. Lobova. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, uh, so Anya <laughs> and, Anna. And, and Anna. And Graciela are our two wonderful employees that work for, for IBAS. So if you hire us to do your accounting, um, these two will be working on your account, maybe, if you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so Anna's been, how long have you been working with the company now, Anna? Six years. And Graciela, a few months? A few months. A few months. So one of the things that I've spoken with, with Anya, <laughs> you call it Because <laughs> that's, that's, how they nice. that's a real Russian name. Really? That's yeah. how you're supposed to say it. She introduced herself as Anya, uh, Anna, because uh, she thought, I don't know what you thought. That's was. my formal name. It is. We would. It is your formal name. Yeah. But people just call you Anya. In the Russian, my family Russian. And friends. Yeah. You guys go back over Anya. here, even though you can't see yourself yeah. in the video. I'm Anya. You're Anya. Okay. That, what's your real name? Formal or informal? I don't know. See, this is why like, we <laughs> see. This is why we having them on the interview. This is stuff where we don't know about like, this what? stuff. Yeah. So what did your parent? What name did your parents give you? Anya. What's on your birth certificate in Belarus? Anna. Anna. Well, Anna, because in Russian you Anna. don't say Anna. It's Anna. Anna. So your real name is Anna, but yeah. everybody calls you Anna. Anna. Is that Anna. Like a nickname? Well, all the English, like, yeah, all yeah. English-speaking people call you Anna. Yeah. But your name is everybody in Russian calls you Anya. Uh huh. All right, but you probably go with Anna because yeah. you don't have to explain yourself. Absolutely. Because it's a weird name. It's not. Two <laughs> Americans. I'm saying two Americans. It's actually an Irish name, apparently. But I'm saying two, two Americans. They yeah. would think it was a weird name. Even though it's not, it's a normal name. No, there yeah. are many Anyas, famous yeah. Anyas. So, all right. So one of the things that me and Anna have talked about, I'll stop saying Anya because it's weird for me to say that. <laughs> so one of the things that, uh, weird when you say it. that me and Anna have talked oh, talked a lot about over the years is the difference between native-born Americans and immigrants mm -hmm. to the United States, their work ethic, their overall outlook on life, how much people complain versus not complain, oh. how much people are appreciative versus <laughs> not appreciative. There's a very uh, common expression called first world problems. You're familiar with this expression? Yeah. Right. So I've gotten like some good insight about you know, what, what an immigrant sees as first world problems versus what Americans see as real problems. So all that stuff is really interesting to me, mm -hmm. especially here in the Seattle area. This whole area is made up of, of so many immigrants that I thought, I don't know if I've ever heard an interview or a podcast of people just talking about like, what is the immigrant experience? What do you like? What do you not like? What is it like to come over and have to speak a different language? Like, how, how long have you been here, Anna? 24 years. How long have you been here, Graciela? <laughs> Longer than her, but I did not go to school as much. Uh-huh. So. But so go ahead and say it. How long? Since I was 14. Since you were 14. All right. So since you were 14, but I know, for example, you've been here for such a long time, mm -hmm. but even things like having to, speak to professionals in English still bothers you. Yeah. Are you still sensitive about your English too? Yes, a lot. And Especially really... professionally. Yes. Even though you've been here way longer than you were in your because native country. the first 16 years I didn't, did not speak English at all. Oh, I mean, I hardly speak English. That's true. The wow. first 16 years. There's a, right? So especially for Spanish speakers yes. here in the United States, there's huge neighborhoods, huge pockets mm -hmm. where you don't even have to speak. Is it exactly. like that with Russian too? Yeah, well, it depends on the city, but LA, New York, I mean, they have Russian guests. They uh, have the Russian guests. So where you don't have to even learn English. So you, you could, you could spend a whole bunch of time, like 16 years or something like that, and never have yeah, to learn English at absolutely. all? Absolutely. You know Senior that? citizens actually yes. do that. They do. They have their own communities, parks, newspapers, TV, grocery stores. I mean, they don't grocery have... Stores. Yeah, they do. They <laughs> yes. have little Russian shops with Russian-speaking uh, personnel, uh -huh. and they buy all of their produce there. Well, you know this, man, because I've been in so I've been in like Spanish language Spanish, congregations yeah. this yeah. whole time, yeah. right? right? Mm -hmm. You too. That there's tons of people who are like highly educated. You listen to them talk; they're the articulate mm -hmm. in Spanish, but they've been here for like 20 years and they barely speak any English. Yeah. I mean, you see that kind of stuff all the time. Yeah. So, how old were you when you came to the United States? 16. All right, and you were 14. 14. So, right around the same time. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm just gonna ask you it'll chime in if you have any questions. All right. Yeah. All right. So, why did you come from? From Belarus. You're originally from Belarus. What happened? Uh, what my, brought you over here? My parents. Yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> my parents immigrated here, so I had to come along. Were you uh, sad to leave Belarus? Oh no, I was very happy. You hated leave. Belarus? Yeah. Not that I hated, but I really wanted to to leave. There's a lot of pers persecution there. Yeah, there was persecution yeah. and my personal medical problems, so I really wanted to. Mm -hmm. But I was uh, very happy. Was life like not good at all there, or is there anything about it? it? Very like looking great. back, is it? Oh, okay, it's great. It was, and I did not see any future for myself at all there, like none of it. And I was graduating in school, so I was in the senior. A uh, year in school, and I was so happy we left six months before I graduated because it would be very hard for me. Okay. I, I hated school and in Belarus. In Belarus, I just hated it, all of it. So, I think you mentioned because you, you're, you're Jewish and they yeah, speak you up yeah, and give you hard time and stuff. Yeah, they were again. I was the only Jewish in my whole school. Uh -huh. so were, I was living in such a countryside that it was hard. It was just. And I think Belarus is one of the only remaining countries that still has some U.S. Or, or yeah, like a communist, di like a communist yeah. dictator. Yeah. Now Venezuela has one. Yeah. But before that, it was just Belarus. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, where did you move to when you came over here? L.A. We went straight to Los Angeles, uh -huh. and I lived there for four years, and then I started moving after I got married. Yeah. So. And so what was, the, what was like your first impression of the United States when you came over here? So here's my very first impression. We had a layover in Chicago, O'Hare Airport, and it was uh, December 21st that we immigrated. So we were flying, and it's right before Christmas, and it's right before Hanukkah. And it's so festive everywhere. So from gray Belarus, we're just in not of it. <laughs> and it's communist, right? So there's no religious celebrations? No, not, not at all. And it's just like straight to all this festivities mm -hmm. in the airport just it's not like it's a community center mm -hmm. that's what's a pro, a yeah, pro you're, yeah you're not, in, you're not in a neighborhood or something no it's yeah. not it's an airport and i see menorah the first, i see light lit up menorah was like i think it was fourth day of hanukkah mm -hmm. and i remember it's huge and i was fascinated by it and i'm going there are no writings on menorahs, there is no hate speech on menorah, no one's trying to destroy it. Like, is this normal? And then I just go because Chicago Hare Airport is huge. And I'm going through this alley to go to our next flight. And all this all this lights. I remember all these lights, and then I see a little food and it has coca-cola this is the first time i saw real coca-cola <laughs> like okay this is real yeah. <laughs> so this is real so did yeah. you come over here as like a religious asylum or uh, something? refugees as it refugees was, yeah religious refugees okay. what year was it was 94. 1995. Yeah. yeah. All right. So your so so your 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 first impression was pretty positive then. Very positive. Like, and then we landed in Los Angeles and <laughs> we're getting out and it's the same. Uh, Christmas trees, Hanukkah, all the celebrations, and then I come out from the airport and I see palm trees. And it's like, whoa, okay. <laughs> this is no palm even trees more real. No. <laughs> this is even more realistic. It's like, whoa, this is amazing. But I remember we were. It was December, and we were wearing our sweaters and snow boots and fur coats, and we landed in Los Angeles, and it's so hot. But it was really cool. All right, cool. All right, Graciela, I'm going to ask you some questions too. But I just want to um, quickly mention the reason why, in addition, why I thought talk, talking about immigration would be be such an interesting topic. Uh, I don't think I think people forget like, like nobody that lives in the United States is can trace their lineage back to the United States. Everybody in the United States is by definition an ancestor of an immigrant. I think it's mm -hmm. like, it's, true. it's super easy to forget that. Yeah. Um, just because you, you, you were born here, yeah. but yeah. all you got to go, well, yeah. So now your kids are just American. Well, yeah. Yeah, they were born here. Yeah. And probably like two generations. And your kids too, Graciela. Yeah. My kids your kids too. And probably just like a generation or two from now, they'll totally forget that. Yeah, they'll go to Ancestry.com yeah. and they're looking for the Ancestry. Because, yeah. I don't think so, because we make sure they know where you they make sure well, Yeah, yeah. yeah. We all know where It's, yeah, yeah. it's no. you have to, but I'm telling you, I think what's going to, so. Culture, what can I say? Culturalmente hablando. Um, culturally speaking. Okay, yeah. yes. Yeah. Maybe yeah. they will get used more to well, the so American. Their, and, yeah. They're second generation, right? So they yeah. still have a mom who yes. was from, the, a different country. But for example, in my case, we were talking about this. Your dad's what, Scandinavian? Mm -hmm. So how did the first Scandinavians end up over here? Do you know? 
Um, I think it was. Who's from Scandinavia? His, his parents? His, yeah, his mom and his, his dad, they are, are immigrants. All right, so his grandparents. But as kids. So oh, their oh, parents. But look, you guys came over as kids. Yeah. So his parents mm-hmm. came from another country. Mm-hmm. His, sorry, his grand, his grandparents. grandparents. His grandparents. Did your dad give you any kind of cultural education? <laughs> Zero. He Zero. He I'm telling you. Well, he yeah. could. He could give him American. No, but, because well, he's an American. So, but this is what I'm telling. This is why I think it's important. Because, yeah. for example, all right. So you're giving your kids some cultural education yeah. about yeah. Russian. Yeah. All right. But their kids? Probably not. It's probably gonna die. And same. So it dies away really quick. I, yeah. For me, on. On my side, on my mom's side, we're Polish Jew, and that just goes back like two, like my my mom's grandma is from Poland, yeah. and I think it goes back like three generations on my dad's side. We're German farmers who settled in the Midwest. We're all we're all descended from immigrants in this country, yeah. mm-hmm. and everybody forgets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like everybody forgets. All right, Graciela. So, mm-hmm. where are you from originally? Yes, Mexico country. City. Mexico is okay. Mexico <laughs> City. All right, so what what happened? How did you, you end up coming to the United States? Because my, well, we I was born in Mexico City, but then we were raised in Juarez and then Mexicali, north of Mexico. And Mexicali is on Mexico, the border with Arizona, right? Border, no, with California. With California? Calexico, California. Calexico, okay. So we were living in Mexicali at that time for about five years. And my, my mom, she will be going, uh, coming here. To, to work. To work. And she will go back to Mexicali maybe after a week or sometimes after a month. I think a, a, a lot of people still do that mm-hmm. in Mexicali, right? Yes. And then when I was 14, because I was not in school, that's a different, another story. <laughs> <Is> that, <laughs> well, because of lack of money. Well, we didn't have enough money to, to, um, send, me to, to send me to school. Because it, it was like um, middle school. Middle school, but it's expensive. Yeah, in other so, countries they have private school, right? It's well, not as much public school. Not this is public, but it still was expensive. It, but, we have to pay to enroll, yeah, buy uniforms. And and buy and my, my mom had nine kids, oh, nine kids, nine kids. I, yeah. I'm the fourth of the nine kids. Yep. So then she decided to bring the four, four older girls to work with her. In the fields okay, in what, California. What, what, what kind of work was she doing? Um, Picking fruit? It was just for like three, four months. Uh-huh. Yeah. Doing fruit. And we did, I worked in the, uh, I'm getting like this yeah. confused. I'm, since I know we're no, don't worry recording. About it. No, it's like, okay. okay. So I work okay. in, um, oh, grapevine, grape, grape, grape no. vines. Yeah, grapevines. Yes. Grape okay. Yeah. Um, I'm just kidding. If you forget the word, say it in Spanish, Spanish and I'll yeah. translate it. Mm-hmm. Sembrando los, los planting. De la uvas. Planting. Planting and grapes. Then mm. Cortando las uvas. And then just cutting them. Picking them. Picking them. Okay. Yeah. There's a word for it, but I'm going. No, don't worry no, about it. Yeah. If you forget, just say yeah. it in Spanish. So we did that for three months. Okay. And so you were coming over and going back? No, I stayed, uh, stayed in California. Okay. So we started in like close to Indio and then go further north. Uh-huh. And my mom decided that we should stay here because it was four of us and then only five were in, in Mexicali. So uh-huh. she said, we can stay here. And did so the other five come? They, yes. They did. My father and my other. Well, what? Four. Because one of them was already married. So only four of us. Uh-huh. The rest of our family came. So your so mom, we stayed here. your dad, and eight of you yes. came over. And where did you end up staying here in Washington? Um, well, originally? I stayed in California and then we went to Chicago. Oh, you guys went to the Chicago? The same year, yes. The oh. same year. It was okay. back in 81. Why did you decide to oh, go 80. to Chicago? Why did you decide to go to Chicago? My mom had two sisters living in Chicago. Uh-huh. I mean, three sisters and my grandma. And I don't know why she decided to send us to Chicago with my father. So it was three, the, uh-huh. um, two sisters, my father, and I went to Chicago. Okay. Mm-hmm. And how did you like Chicago? I always um, easy going. I don't mind where I go. <laughs> right, so I mean, I was really easy going. Same. Same. Yeah. That's yeah. what I totally remember. We're adaptable. Yeah. We adaptable. adaptable. Exactly. And we were moving since I was born. We lived yeah. in Mexico for years, then three years in Juarez, yeah. mm-hmm. back to Mexico three years, 
go to, to Mexicali for years, yeah. California half a year, then moved to Chicago well, for another half a year, went back to California for Yeah, well, and when you're a first generation, em, when you're a first generation <laughs> immigrant, you're not really from a place here. Exactly. You got to find out exactly. where the place is. You're already be. from somewhere else yeah. so far that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. what is so, no, no, no complaints. Well, there's yeah. one shock. When I went to Chicago, they my aunt decided to enroll me in the high school in Chicago mm -hmm. because of my grades or whatever they however they figured it out, I was able to go to from seventh grade uh -huh. in Mexico to tenth grade here in uh yeah. I don't know how Where they figured it out. Uh, La Villita. <laughs> you know the Spanish, the Spanish. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. got south, south. Yeah. It's not South Chicago, but yeah, yeah. close to the south. Mm -hmm. okay. Twenty sixth Street. Yes. And everybody speaks Spanish. Uh -huh. Yeah. Then the enrollment school. That when I was like in shock because the attitude of the students towards the teachers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So disrespectful. Yeah. Very disrespectful. Oh, spoiled. Yes. Everybody. That's. I think that's. Yeah. A, I think that's what makes kids like that. They're totally spoiled. But that was different when then we after six months we moved back to California uh -huh. and I was lucky that they enrolled me in school again. So I continued the tenth grade in California, Broly, California. But the um it was different. Uh -huh. Kids were more okay. respectful. All right, so it was Maybe specific. because it was the city, but yeah. I was surprised because even the Hispanic students were Okay, Very so that was not like not that was not a spoiled thing. That was no. it was just was it just a bad neighborhood? And you know what I think it was? It was because that's one thing. When you immigrate as a teenager, yeah. if you don't have your family supporting you really like tie and yeah. aware of everything that's going on, you get so lost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you don't care about school or you don't care because you're well, you're trying to survive, right? Yeah. Yes. And maybe you don't even know that you're trying to do that. And like me, I was like more like, I don't care about school anymore. My kids, my friends will tell me, let's skip classes. And I was a very good student back in Mexico mm -hmm. and I had my awards and everything from first, the first six, seven years. Mm -hmm. But here, because it was like, nobody cares, what, why, should, why should I care? Yeah. And then if your parents, not, they're not like there, yeah. then you just, yeah. yeah. Um, it's too much. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, for, I guess, uh, let me ask you, Graciela, since you're talking, if you don't mind, Dana. Yeah. So, what, what was your first impression of the United States when you got here? I was used to the United States because... Because uh, you were always coming over the border. Come over the but border. But what was it like living in the United States as opposed to just coming over? Did you like it? Did you mix? Did you miss Mexico? I missed school and my friends. You missed school and your yes. friends. Okay. Yeah, that's the only thing I missed. Because we, I was with my family, yeah. in a way it wasn't too lonely, yeah. Yeah. but my friends and... What did your parents think? I want to know that about you too. My parents? Yeah, were they did they miss Mexico? Were they happy to be in the United States? Or like what was their outlook on it? My father, <laughs> he missed Mexico so much. Even from back in uh, when I was five, my mom wanted to we were living in Juarez. Uh -huh. My mom wanted us to stay in Texas. She said, Let's go over and move everybody. Why did she want to move over? Just more money? Because she knew it was there was more chances for everybody. Uh -huh. And for her to have a better job and for us to go to school. But because my father misses Mexico so much, we went back to Mexico. So now in California, it happened. The same happens. My father wanted to go back to Mexico, and then they had problems, so they decided to mm -hmm. divorce. Yeah. And he moved back to Mexico. Uh, but you all stayed here well, with your mom. Here. Yeah, we were adoptable. My mom was used to be in the United mm -hmm. States because she she's been crossing the border since I was born. I think no, since I was like. Four, yeah, or three or four years old. Well, it's always a mom's job to make sure that the family mm -hmm. is, is, is taken care of. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So, what did your parents think? Do they miss Belarus or are they happy with you? My father did. My father missed it tremendously, mm -hmm. and he went back after a year living here. Huh. He went back to Belarus, and he did not go back ever since. So for twenty, yeah, twenty-three years. He so didn't he went back to Belarus. Belarus yeah. And just I, for a visit. And when he went back, what did he? He was like. Uh, he, he, I remember he told me, I was afraid because it was winter and it was a snowstorm at the airport and uh, flights were all down. So I was afraid that they'll actually keep me in Belarus for longer. Yeah. I wanted to wait. But he missed Belarus. He did. He missed his home country. He, his mom still lives there. Yeah. So maybe because of that, when she immigrated, right. I think it stopped. But my mother, she actually told me, 
from the second she landed in USA, she felt as a fish in the water. Uh-huh. So comfortable. She never wanted to go back to Belarus. Not once. Neither did I. Yeah, and you never wanted to go back, Graciela? To go back to live? Mm, now I do. Now yeah. that I'm older. Yeah. When I go back and visit Mexico, I feel like I belong there. Really? Mm. Yes. Okay. I feel like I want to stay there. What is it about? Is it the the language or it's just you just feel like your heart's still there? The language, the lifestyle, Uh maybe. It it feels different. Yeah, well, the Hispanic countries are different. The lifestyle is different, you know, from being in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. It's more relaxing. Yeah, but then again, because of medical issues and... Yeah. But I do feel like I want to be there, like I belong there. Yeah. You don't feel like that? You, you feel no. like U.S. is I would be is your such place. a foreigner in Belarus right now. I, that's but... a, I know, but you say sometimes you feel like a foreigner here, too. Uh, I do. So you're just like permanently a foreigner? Uh, yeah. 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 We're permanently a foreigner. Yeah. yeah, you kind of like don't have an actual... No. No. You feel like that, too, Graciela? Yeah, um, I mean, there's so many Spanish speakers around. Because that. there is some... In some ways, over there, I do feel like a foreigner. When you go back to Mexico? Yeah. Yes. Uh, interesting. Yeah. In some ways. Which ways? It has to be like with the situation. Like, let's put it this way. So we go to a restaurant to have breakfast. Mm-hmm. And then people arrive at the restaurant, other um, people, clients. Mm-hmm. And they would say to you, oh, good morning. And because I came and I didn't say good morning to anybody, I feel like, oh, oh yeah. like weird. And some yeah. of the costumes. And then when they leave the mm-hmm. restaurant, they will tell you, Provecho, uh-huh. like enjoy your meal. Yeah, they would say back to you. Uh, and I feel like I don't do that, and I go, oh, I'm, I feel weird. Like, oh, like you're missing out on little cultural things. That those you little be cultural doing. things, exactly. And do you think they know this too? And they're like, I think they do. Like, this, is a, this is an American. <laughs> and there's this kind of, gossip and the whole yeah. little town. Thing. <laughs> so, I, so well, no, it's even big, big, uh, not little towns. It's oh, big really? towns. So I want to ask you this honestly. Now you don't have to talk bad about your children, but I'm curious about <laughs> this. How? Are your kids different than you since they haven't had to like live through the immigrant experience? How are kids? How are American kids different than immigrant? Kids? Very different. All right, go ahead. Tell so, me. So, first of all, we had to help a lot house in in a house in home. So, I didn't have any animals like pigs, and we didn't have any what is that livestock uh-huh. when I was growing up. But yeah. most of my classmates did, and we had a garden. We had a because we were all given a piece of land where we would grow potatoes and another little piece of land where we would grow our vegetables and fruits. My kids do know a little bit about it because we have a balcony and we have a little box and it's more of a fun idea. So to them, growing fruits and vegetables, they don't comprehend the idea of raising a living stock, Mm -hmm. for example, or vegetables and fruits. There's a grocery store, there's a Safeway, POC, PCC, you just uh, pick whichever you can afford, that's it. They don't understand that potatoes grow in the ground and apples on a tree. It all grows in a Safeway. So they're they're totally disconnected from From, from what's real. (laughs) Yeah, Pretty much, and then washing dishes, like, what is that? We've always had a dishwasher here. I mean, it's so foreign to them. And they don't understand that you can dry your clothes on the closest line. Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> closest thing to them, it's something to have a glue dot, put it on your wall, and put a picture there. Yeah. Right? Whereas closest thing is a necessity in third world countries to dry your clothes. Mm-hmm. So do you think it's a good thing or a bad thing that they don't know about that it, You know what really was a great example? The snowstorms in February here where we could see my daughter was like, well, I have to wash my hair. What am I going to do? I'm going to just, we have a gas, right? We have yeah. a gas oven and wrench, just warm up some water. And she was looking at me as if I was an alien. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Because we didn't have electricity yeah. and we could not have hot water. We only had cold lunch. Like, I don't understand what you're talking about. That's why you need to go camping. <laughs> 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 to remind them of Belarus. <laughs> Right. <laughs> we got no, the camping, camping in USA is like you have everything, right? You have shampoo, you have so different camping than it would be in Belarus. So to her, it was, what do you do with the water from the stove? Like you just have some, add some cold water, and that's a normal temperature to wash your hair. Yeah. Like, did she do it? No, she was looking at me like, can we go buy a dry shampoo? <laughs> and I know like, another, I'm going to buy a dry shampoo. I know, I know another thing you told me too is, for example, like you were you were legitimately scared of your dad growing up. 
Yeah, I was. My mother always made sure that um, my father is a um, respected figure in the family. Yeah. And uh, it was pretty much, I don't think it was actually the best idea, yeah. but that's how we were all grown up. Same with teachers. We were terrified. I was terrified of teachers. And actually in galleries, the whole years and stuff, when the teacher works in the classroom, everyone has to get up. Every student, we had to. So there's a lot more res like a d respect. There's a lot more respect for authority. Yes, yes. Yeah. So teachers were That's like that. Up. Yeah, and here it was like it's a good thing if students will shut up at ten minutes in the class. You know. All right. So, uh, so. so let me ask you this because we're going to run out of time because we only got a half an hour. I want to ask ourselves some more <laughs> questions. Just tell me, what are your favorite things about the United States and the people, and what are the things that you think, you know. We should, we, that, that Americans are annoying. Like, how are, how are nat native born Americans annoying? Or what do you think is like is missing from a native born American that they should have that, that immigrants have, but native born people don't have? Be honest. So, 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 what do you like the best? Let's start with that. What's good about the United States, in your opinion? I like the choices. Okay. All the choices everyone is given. And I do not understand this. Oh, I cannot find myself. That's total. <laughs> Bull crap, like really. There's libraries, free libraries, free public libraries, all these seminars, all these classes for free, all of this, uh, colleges that you can, if you cannot afford them, government would help you. So you can find something for you, for yourself. So yourself. that it's lazy. So that it's like lazy. I can't find myself. That basically is I'm I'm just unhappy for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. So and then it's a whole therapy, and it's like. Uh, and to me, it's very important. So this whole you know, that was, feel well, finding yourself. It was interesting what you said about boring. having to work the land, because if everything is given to you, you get into like, well, what's the point of life? But when yes. right, but right. when you have to pull <laughs> potatoes out of the land, it's like to leave, it's like, to survive. It, right? That's the point. Yeah, we got to eat. Like that's we have a whole winter yeah. of us. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. So, that's the point. We got to yeah. survive. Yeah. We got to yeah. you know we got to keep it together. But here. It's when everything when everything is given to you, all right. Yeah. So you're, that's what you're saying. That's one of the annoying. So it's, it's annoying. Well, so that's a blessing and a curse. So you're saying exactly. the variety, mm -hmm. the the vast amounts of stuff, yeah, all the choice, yeah. You like it, but it's also causing people to be uh, yeah. unhappy because they don't know what exactly. what the meaning of life is. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what I think. I mm -hmm. agree. And I yeah. And I somehow I can find all the resources, and I keep telling people go to the library. Start with the library. There's so much resources. But yeah, she like, told me that. no, yeah. you can just go. They they wait for from some authoritative and library is mm -hmm. taken like, uh, you know, just for fun, like leisure something yeah. or have a room for an hour just to so they so, play. Pe so people underappreciate oh yeah the resources that oh, they yeah. have here. They take, they take it for there. granted. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They, not only they take it for granted, they don't understand how much those resources resources are valuable uh -huh. and how much they offer. That's my biggest. So that under, and you, that that probably happens with your kids too. Uh, it does because pretty much anybody born here yeah. doesn't realize. I think I think what happens is you start to just figure everywhere's like this, so yeah. it doesn't seem that that special or important. Yeah. 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 That's my problem. There are so many cases when immigrants abuse this, immigrants abuse the American system because they find all of this loopholes and they yeah. know how to use it, whereas Americans like. I don't know. I'll just go to the office. Yeah. They'll tell me or yeah. something. I'm like, no, they won't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. So because we were, we had to survive. Yeah. So again, summer was not to enjoy for adults, but to prepare for winter, mm -hmm. so they can survive during winter. Yeah, that's so. interesting. All right, let me ask you guys some questions. So, how are your kids different than how you were when you you were a kid since they were born here? <sighs> don't say anything I, bad about it. No, if I'm honest. There wasn't a lot of difference. You raised them in the same because style. I kind of like, for example, we never had a lot of food in our kitchen, or mm -hmm. we had what we needed for the week, or even mm -hmm. on daily basis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So until my uh, until my girl was like eight years old, yeah. Jeanette, the oldest one, I started and like accumulating food in my cabinets. Uh -huh. Because I will, I was doing the same as my parents. We're just cooking every day, going cooking out and every shopping day, maybe cooking. for the week, but yeah. no more than that. Right. Uh, and then, the only thing I saw different on them is like I was I'm bored. Like really, you bored? Uh, There's so much to right, do. Right. I was <laughs> never bored. I just never. I told my girl, I never ever said to my mom, I'm bored because yeah. 
there was always something to do, go out and play, right. read. I love reading since I was a little girl. Mm -hmm. I would read every newspaper, mm -hmm. even those ugly newspapers. <laughs> yeah. But um, that's one thing that I noticed, yeah. getting bored. And then my grandkids, they complain about it. I said, that's not good. It's not good when a kid tells you that they're bored. Yeah. It's very common here. Yeah. Kids get super bored That's here. Exactly. Kids. But in Mexico, you know me. Well, at least when I go and visit my husband's hometown, I don't hear kids saying I'm bored. You know what I think part of the reason is why kids get bored here too? Is because parents are super overprotective. And and that's my another thing. That's the difference between my mom and I. I was very protective with my kids. Uh -huh. Even though I, uh, well, I would not let him go out and play in the street, mm -hmm. yeah. which I'm very comfortable to do in Mexico. Why? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's probably safer yeah. here, honestly. Probably. Yes, in the, exactly. In the street, because people, my mind, people in Mexico don't follow any traffic rules or anything. cultural idea of yeah. play dates I, yeah. and not play dates in Mexico or in Belarus. We just we didn't go out and play, play dates. No. <laughs> no. We just go out to the street yeah, and no play wait dates. for no, my to parents are not. No, no, my parents were not saying to play dates. And if a car comes and they just slow down and throw a free out of the and, and but I became very protective too. Yeah. But at the same way, I raised them the way I was raised. I taught them how to use, how to hand wash dishes. Mm -hmm. I still do that. They do it. They know how to wash their own mm -hmm. clothes. Cause we will we will visit Mexico, and they will do that in Mexico. You're gonna wash your own clothes and and get ah, to dry. Mm -hmm. So. And are they doing like you said? You have grandkids. Do they make their kids do that? Or do their kids have it too there easy? We go. No, they only use the washing machine. It's and my grandkids way. don't like to go to Mexico. But my kids, they and love going to Mexico. Because of the way you put in them. Yeah. Because you told them about how Since good Mexico they were. Little. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But they but yeah. But and you were born there, so it, it was your home your home place. And choices to eat. Here in the United States. Yeah. yeah. Choices. Too many choices. I don't many want choices. to right? <laughs> I don't I know. Know. eat what I I never <laughs> complain to my mom. I don't oh. want to eat this. I like, know. Don't give him choices. I'll this is I'll food. be honest. So we went out to we went out to a Thai food restaurant, and my and one my my oldest son's like Thai food again. I don't want to go eat Thai. Food. I know. That's, that's sushi. That's my oh, son. We went to a food great. court, and we were looking, and it was in San Diego. I think we went to somehow we ended up in the food court, and he looks at all this place like there's nothing for me to eat. I was just. Are you kidding me? Yeah. There's nothing. You are eight years old. There's nothing for you to eat in the whole food court. <laughs> yeah. Like, how how, how is this even possible? It's, exactly it's, it's like when you American. go on. It's like when you go on Netflix. You're like, there's nothing good to watch here. There's always something. <laughs> I know there is. But that happens. You want this? Like, there's nothing here for me. Because you're so inundated with choices that it goes back yeah, to too my, many choices. you're looking for the perfect thing right. all the time. Too many choices. Uh, yeah, it's that. They give for granted what they Thank have. Yes. They get used to all this, um, uh, very, yeah. and they don't appreciate it. Yes. With my kids, I want to make sure they did appreciate it, and they didn't have that attitude. With my great, great, with my grandkids, it's a little bit harder, mm -hmm. but I still do it. <laughs> yeah, but it's hard. <laughs> but it's hard. Yeah, because there's, there's, yes. that's what I was saying. And just two, right. ge usually in two generations. It's, it's all, it's all, it's all gone. Yeah. And then what happens is people who are born in the United States. Even if just like your grandma's from another country, you start looking at immigrants like you're not from here. Yeah, and you start looking for yourself it's and weird. go to the old therapy because yeah. you cannot find yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretty um, much. So let me ask. So you were saying, the same thing. What you like about the United States is the choice. Is that not, not the choices, but um, the sense of security? Yeah. Okay. Uh, like if I get sick. Uh, I'm gonna get help. I'm gonna mm -hmm. get. Yeah. If if I go to any a hospital, right. they right. would treat me, and I still feel more secure. Like if I go to the police, they would help me instead of like in Mexico Asking that they would Yeah. Or mm. the bri oh, bribery. That is one of the things I always dislike. So it's common that, in, in so many countries. Even here, but not as much. Not as, you, you can't really bribe a police <laughs> officer. In Chicago, you could. Really? You know, when I went to get my first license, my husband said, here, put this on the money on the... Yeah. And I said, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I, I was like, no, but you can do it in Chicago. Okay. But it works? It's not. I didn't do it. Oh, you did? No, 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 no. It works. With I, could never, I could never bribe anybody. Probably I don't, I don't I have I never did. Anything. In Mexico, I was... They bribed... When I went to visit Mexico... Uh, at the airport, they want me, the Mexican um, 
Yes, immigration I, yeah, yeah yes. they wanted me to give them money yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. because i didn't have my passport i only had my um birth certificate yeah yeah mm. i was there for an hour and i said i'm not giving you anything you want to return me to united states you can yeah. return me to united states huh. but i'm not going to give you any money yeah so what do you not like <laughs> about the united states what's uh what's missing here that that we that, should have another country that 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 we should have brought with us from the countries that we all came from i don't i mean it's not the, the, the well, how can I put it? Um, can in Spanish, no translation. No es la gente, no es, las, es, no es el país, o sea, es el gobierno mm -hmm. que, que da ciertas ventajas. Uh -huh. Por ejemplo, me gusta la idea de que puedes estudiar. Si tú quieres estudiar y salir adelante, lo puedes hacer. Mm -hmm. En mi país es más difícil porque una vez que terminas de estudiar, necesitas palancas. Más allá que aquí. Palanca, ¿sabes lo que es palanca? Oh, like connections? Yes, but more than, you need so them me, everywhere, so but over there this. you need them more so than So what here. you're saying is here, you can study, if you work real hard and study, then you, you, can, can, you, can, you, you can get opportunities, yeah, and you, you can, can get ahead. Without yes. having yes. connections in high places. Oh, yes. oh, to pay Very true. bribery people. Yeah, yeah. 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 very true. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But in general, for me, it's just a sense of um, security and some sort of... Uh, yeah, so what's what's like, I remember when I was in, and we're going to have to wrap it up, because sure. we're in, but this is such, such an interesting topic, you know, I can talk about this all day. It's endless. I was not yeah. prepared. No, no, this is perfect. You can't prepare. No, no, this is perfect. So, for example, I remember being in Peru one time, I was at a soccer game, and I went to go get a bottle of water, and here, you just, everybody waits in line, and then you get up, and you get your turn, but oh, there, it's yeah, like, everybody goes straight to the counter, and they're like, holding their money out, like, give me one, give me one, give me one, give me one, and your only choice yeah. is to like, jump in there. So yeah. here we're rule followers, yeah. that, which is uh, very helpful. Yes. Which Same you don't. With the bus stations, if you know. Oh yeah. And oh, here yeah. everyone stands in line in the bus. No. And, and so, Belarus is like we're just crowded yeah, around the door. So, so, so whoever can get Yeah, in. and here like it's very common for no, you go first. No, you go. Yeah. No, you. No, yeah. you. Yeah. Right. Well, or or if you're standing looking in the grocery store, looking at some food, and someone walks in front of you, you're like, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm so sorry yeah. about that. Yeah. On, on your left, on your right, yeah. your brother. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Really? All right, well, let me, because we got to wrap it up, but let me just say what I like about immigrants and what I see as a weakness in the United oh, States yeah. and strength. No, <laughs> well, so Zach, you, you listen up. This is coming for you. All right. You listen so, up. <laughs> so to me, like you said about being adaptable, but I really have come to hate people who complain a lot. It just, it just grates on me. And I've noticed that the, the immigrants that I've worked with or that are my friends, like, because we're in the Spanish language congregation, you just see people who are just tough, just so much tougher. Like little things don't don't get yeah. get immigrants down because you've been through much worse. Mm -hmm. You know, you've, you've you've had to work super hard. And here, um, we work hard, but it's not survival kind of work. Yeah. You know, like yeah. you do. So, and the other thing I do like about when I'm in foreign countries is the work is different. But it, it appears to me that people sort of enjoy the moment or enjoy simple things. Um, and joy, well, there's, there's a little bit more just joy in life in other countries that I've noticed. And I think it is because, like we were saying, when you have so much stuff, you have so many options, you're always looking for this perfect, like, it, no, I, it's kinda, I want it to be just like exactly how I want it. Yeah, you're very, very picky because it's possible to be picky. Because if you keep looking, you might find that exact little thing that you're looking for. But you go to other countries, it's like, whatever we got is great. Like, we eat, we talk. And... um. Also, another thing is, uh, at least here in Seattle, you got to work so hard to survive. Like you got to really work hard in a way to get by here. Not hard work, but you got to put in a lot of hours. And so there's a lot less time. It seems like to just be be with your family here in the United States. Yeah, seems like family is less important in the United States. Yes, but then again, there are so many choices. You have great choices to go out and be with your family yeah. and enjoy each other. But, but that's the thing. Like here, but here you people, get, you have to look for something perfect. But here you feel like you got time. here also you feel like you gotta go out to do something. Like I noticed when we're in Peru. No, you can play chess or yeah. monopoly with your kids. You you can. Yeah. Yeah, you can. But it's always like let's go out to get eat, let's go out to eat or let's oh, go hang out at the mall American. or let's go to a park. Yeah, no, no, but that's, <laughs> but that's what I don't like. Oh, that's what you don't that's like. What that's I don't true. Like. Okay, that's so, yeah, I see. It. What I like right. is like when I go to Peru to visit my wife's family, yes. people talk. Yeah. yeah, they just talk to each other yeah. for a long time, yeah. and people are funny. And yes, and even we just stay there staring at people going by, and 
sometimes you don't need to talk you just there with them yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That's I, very true. You, I, you're right then you make a comment yeah people have <laughs> gatherings more yeah. family gatherings yeah. yes yeah yeah All even right. outside the street where you yes. live people will go out at night and yeah, and get sunflower seeds and, uh, and yeah. start <laughs> gossiping about well, everything. And everybody, and, everybody knows, and everybody knows each other. Yeah. So, yeah. like, here, and so, anyway, so I think, if I'll just to wrap it up, but I'll just Sorry. say this. No, no, it was really good. But so, one thing of the reason why people want to come to the United States for opportunity, we have a super productive economy. Yeah. And a lot of it is based on the fact, I don't know how it happened, but a lot of it is based on the fact that we follow rules. Like, that. that's such a, like, a big, important thing. Like, People tend to obey laws here generally, and that makes everything like really organized, which I don't know why it doesn't happen as much in other countries. I'm not sure. Remember but it's one of the big advantages we have. Also here. mentioned a few years ago we were talking about it and you said this country is maybe much richer and much ahead because of the entrepreneurial spirit, because of all the immigrants. So, all right, so I read a I read a really interesting study that said that the people who have enough courage and are adaptable enough and resourceful enough to think like when they're in Mexico, they look like, you know what, we, we should leave here and go try something else, even though it's scary or it's different, but they have like the courage to try something new that those ten, those, the people who are willing to do that tend to be higher IQ. Like they tend to be the best people of the country that leave. Right. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, yeah. Because they're mean. the ones yeah. that are able to look out at a future that doesn't it. exist yet. And say, so, you yeah. know what? I think we can make it. Yeah. And the type of people, the people who have that personality, tend to be the smartest, most entrepreneurial, yeah. most really, like most courageous types of people. Yeah. So, so really, yeah. what what the United States is receiving, and this mm -hmm. is what's ironic, mm -hmm. because <laughs> a lot of people look at immigrants like we don't need any more immigrants, right. you know. Right. But actually, we're getting the best people yeah. from all of these other countries that come here. We're getting the people who are the, like the, the smartest, and most risky, the, like the biggest risk, risk takers, takers. Mm -hmm. the yeah. people who are, who are the best survivors. Just immigration itself is already a risk taker. Yeah, well, like I said, the United States is a, is a young country. Mm -hmm. We've only been around for a few hundred years. Mm -hmm. And all of the people that originally came to this country were immigrants that showed up with nothing and had to just like make something happen. Yeah. Yeah, and, and just kind of figure it out. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty, pretty easy to forget that. But anyways, oh, so there was that and then... Um, the other thing that I wanted to say is the reason why uh, I think people tend not to respect authority as much here as they do in other countries. Like you're saying how kids don't respect mm -hmm. parents as much and stuff and like teachers, that. Yeah, because yeah. the United States was founded on revolution where they overthrew their government. So there's always in the culture, like in the culture of the United States, like you don't tell me what to do on my own property. That's yeah. also why Americans are more, pro more private than in other places. Yeah. They don't want you to walk on their property without permission. There's a little bit of that, like, yeah. you don't tell me what to do. Yeah. But so anyways, all right, anyhow, I guess <laughs> yeah. I just thought I'd share that with you because you probably, guys probably don't get that coming from other countries. But that's like, in a, you get taught that when you're in school. Like, we have rights here, and the government has to yeah. respect it. Oh, oh I think we talk about rights, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, right? but, no, but that's so. <laughs> all right. So, no, 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 uh-huh. And I, I will spank my kids. Not abusively. Exactly. Thank but you. You the know what? Trying to teach this they to say, immigrant you kids. cannot be, you, nobody can hit you. And my daughter you can call in here, parents. you can call the, poli the police. Uh-huh. Yeah. My daughter was the first all, let, to teach oh, immigrant yeah, kids. younger than 10. Well, you cannot spank me because I can call the police. You can call the police. When I get up, I will spank you again. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I like I that. Have, no, yes. So, but, yeah, what well, they get taught in school sometimes mm -hmm. it's not helpful yeah. no 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 it's <laughs> not I, yeah, I, right. I'm talking about my kids right. were telling me that uh they can call uh child, child protection yes. services mm -hmm. well sure call yeah but just remember that they will take you away from us so you will have to live somewhere in an orphanage house with <laughs> ten more kids you'll be lucky if you'll get a shirt and a pants and a pair of socks and a food so you want to do it Here's your suitcase. Go back. I know it's ironic. He never did it again. Too. Yeah, that yeah. Was me the old, my was both of my kids. Yeah. As soon as, um, well, why do you teach? Why do you teach your kids that they can sue, sue you, their parents? I don't understand that. I still don't get they it. They go to the extreme. They, I it know there is, is a lot extreme. of protection for kids here, which is 
I know in my country there's not that much. Which is great in yes, some cases. Yes, then they go over, they go they to go the extreme. Yeah. yeah, agree, I agree. So I guess yeah. for Stampian or for telling your kids not to behave this way, yeah. you're gonna call police, give me a break. I agree. So seriously? So yeah. I don't know what they're, how they're teaching that at school, but the, my kids got it like, oh, no, you cannot touch me because I'm gonna go, yeah, okay, same. Sorry. So there's a, same. yeah, there's there's like a real sort of like ironic thing in American culture, and oh, we could do that forever, there's an American <laughs> culture which is, on the one hand, we're all here, it's like that. Each individual has rights, and an in, the individual is the most important thing above all, and what you want is what you should get because that's how we do it in the United States. It's a free country, mm -hmm. and each yeah. and every single person was a, it has a right to the was a life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and you yeah. can't mess with that, right? But not also, even your parents. yeah, not even your parents, <laughs> nobody, no one. right? No one should be in your way. But also, we're we're extremely conformist. Mm -hmm. Like at the same time, everybody just kind of does what everybody else is doing. And you won't hear many people. It's it's like that. That's right? why they're yeah. social influencers. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. At yeah. the same time, everybody's on like a billion people. Like, the entire country's on Facebook and Instagram. We're all looking at this. So we're all in there together. Yeah. It's a weird thing, you know, to be both like um, it's super individual in your head. You're super yes. individualist, <laughs> but in your actions, you're very conformist. That's yeah. a, an interesting yeah, thing. Yeah. True. And all yeah. this, you're individual, and you have to pursue all this three. Mm -hmm. Items and then we teach in family values. Well, you would like, you would think okay. you would think that that idea of being super individual would lead to like m much more interesting and adventurous people, but it doesn't appear to be the case. You know, it seems like the real interesting people have come from other countries. That's my opinion. No offense, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm with you too. I mean, we're both we're both from here. Uh, no, 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 we're both from here. But I, I no, no, but we're both we're both from here. So I include myself in it. I tend to all, I always tend to be more interested in meeting people from other countries. Yeah. Really, I was telling Zach on a previous episode. I love to run into an African. Like Africans, they have so much energy, and the, the you know. And when I get together with my my father-in-law from Peru, mm -hmm. he tells jokes. What happened to people telling jokes? People from other countries actually tell jokes. What's that? Does your dad tell jokes? Only like my dad doesn't do, comes over. My dad barely, but it's always the same jokes. Every time I see my father-in-law, he's got new jokes. People are funny in other countries. They actually know how to talk and they're charismatic. Yeah. You would think the individual rights would make people more interesting and charismatic. Right. But anyways, all right. So we're gonna wrap it up. We didn't do any pitches or nothing. This is iBass Radio. Hey, visit iBass, <laughs> visit iBassBusiness.com if you need accounting help or if you want us to help you reduce some of your business expenses. Thank you, Anna and Graciela. Immigrant or not, you can reach out. Doesn't <laughs> matter. Doesn't matter. Very we got we got Spanish speakers. We got if you're Russian, we got that. <laughs> if you're Jewish, we got some Jews here. So we, we service Russian. people. If from you're home. a young white kid, <laughs> we're not interested. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take your business elsewhere. Second generation. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you're from if you're from this country and you want to do business with us, you better be able to have at least five jokes. <laughs> I want you to come and tell me five interesting jokes that make me laugh. Otherwise. Don't visit iBassBusiness.com. <laughs> we're not interested. All right, we're signing off.